Hello and welcome to the Ben Washington Baptist Church online service. We are a church in Irving, Texas who believe in the Word of God, the will of God, and the power of God. Our prayer is that something is said to enlighten you, empower you, and inspire you throughout your walk with the Lord. May God bless you abundantly. So gather outside the church. When you you're gather, going to survive, God has to step in your feet. my eyes into the hills from which come my help. I believe, brothers and sisters, that with this text today, we see God inviting you back. Now to him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us without fault before his throne. Sword and shield. He's our will in the middle of a wheel. I know he'll never, never let me down. He's just a jewel that I have found. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I come to praise his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, I come to praise his name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, I come to praise his name. I come to praise his holy name. All right, all right, all right. Thank God for his grace. Thank God for his mercy. I'm just thankful that we have a God that watches over us that never, never, never leaves us. Yeah. Welcoming you to this, our 10 o'clock service. Good morning, Ben Washington. Morning. One more time, good morning, Ben Washington. Morning. I just haven't said that in a whole long time. I sure hope you forgive me. And I'll tell Reverend Collins I'll use my inside voice now. <laughs> We're just grateful to God for another opportunity. We're going to have our scripture. And then a prayer. And then we'll be led into our worship service by our praise team. Our scripture today will be the 71st number of the Psalms. Psalm 71. And it reads, In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be put to confusion. Deliver me in thy righteousness, and cause me to escape. Incline thy ear unto me, and save me. Be thou my strong habitation, whereunto I may continually resort. Thou hast given commandment to save. Excuse me. Save me, for thou art my rock and my fortress. Deliver me, O oh my God, out of the hand of the wicked, out of the hand of the unrighteous and cruel man. For thou art my hope. O oh Lord God, thou art my trust from my youth. I read to you five verses of the 71st number of Psalms. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. Truly God is good all the time. Amen. And all the time God is good. Good morning. Good morning. It's prayer times, my brothers and sisters. Time to give thanks, because we know we are blessed people today. We are so blessed. Let us pray. Eternal God, even our Father, our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Oh, we come now in the name of Jesus, oh God just to say thank you. Yes. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for what you've already done in our lives. Yes, and I want to thank you for what you're doing right now. Yes, and I want to thank you in advance for what you're going to do. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Because we know you didn't bring us this far to leave us, oh God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Father, we thank you for this worship experience this morning, oh God, for we didn't come out for no other reason but to give you praise and honor and glory because you're worthy this morning to be praised. Yes, Father, I thank you for being Washington Baptist Church as a whole. Each member, oh God, and their families, oh God. I want to thank you for our pastor and his family. Yes, 
Oh God, we just can't thank you enough because you've just been so good to us. Yes. Far better than we could ever be to ourselves. Oh God, and while the blood is still running warm in our veins, we just want to say thank you. Thank you, God, because we know we didn't have to be here, oh God. There's so many that already went on before us, oh God, but we know we saw what God cares. And oh God, we just thank you again. I ask that you bless the sick and the shed in, oh God. All the bereaved families, oh God, that's represented, oh God. Oh, God, we just love you, oh, God, and we just can't get along without you down here on this earth. There's so much going on down here, oh, God, but we just know we just keep the faith. Keep on believing, oh, God, that you can do all things but fail. I thank you once again, oh, God. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. And for his sake, I, too, I pray. Everybody said amen and thank you, God. Oh, thank you, Jesus.
the middle. I know he'll never, 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 never. He's a sensual. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah.
God, God has and God is doing great things. Amen. Thank you, God. Every day you wake up, that's a good thing. Amen. Every time there's food on your table, that's a good thing. Every time you're able to walk, that's a good thing. To be in your right mind, that is a good thing. So God is and has and continues to do great things. Well, we are excited to be here today, and uh, we just want to welcome all of our visitors. So if you are a visitor for the first time, if you would just raise your hand, first time visitors, just raise your hand, and let's make sure we give them a visitor card. We got, amen. You got a visitor right here, right next to Brother Ivory on the second row. Let's make sure she gets a card. Amen. So we're asking our visitors just please fill out the card and give it back to us at the end of service. And we'd like to just send you an acknowledgement of your presence. And so we do appreciate each and every last one of you being here. Uh, we're going to uh, have Sister Sneed come up. Uh, and give a, a, a verbal announcement. Then Sister Lanita will have the video announcements right thereafter. Amen. 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 Is there a bloom in the room? Our ladies in the conference, amen. Amen. What an awesome time we had on yesterday. Boy, I'm still on a natural high for that. And I just want to thank all the ladies who came. You look so beautiful. We learned much we felt so much we grew so much um, our scripture was that we are a, his workmanship created for good works that God has prepared in advance for us and we learned all day long to bloom where we're what planted yes make sure we're in the right pot the pot that God put us in and then bloom right where we are and so I am encouraging all the ladies who attended the conference and those who missed and want to get a recap from the woven sisters themselves to come to the meeting not this we're not going to have woven tomorrow but next Monday on the 9th recap the conference from the beginning to the end from the planning and the volunteers from the check-in from the teas and totes and the fellowship and the lunch and the blooming activity and all the testimonies. And oh my gosh, Sister Sonia Dickerson. And what a word she served, yes. So we want to hear how God blessed you during the conference on Monday the uh, 9th. And then the second announcement, I want you to get ready, get ready, get ready for April the 29th, 2023 for our next It's a New Season conference, okay? <laughs> The last Sunday, the last Saturday in April will be an annual It's a New Season conference. So uh, we're looking forward to that. And then um, we're going to all wear our T-shirts on the first Sunday in June. And so in case you didn't get one or see what they're like, we have a model here. Jackie, can you still model for us, please? Our Bloom T-shirt, Bloom Where Your Planet. <laughs> And we'll fit in right with the white everybody else is wearing on the first Sunday in June. So ladies, wear your shirts. We have a few extra. So if you want one, you can contact Sister Lily, who will hook you up with a shirt. Amen. So ladies, thank you. And again, and special thanks to Deacon Raphael and Brother Ed for doing all the audio and the mics. And to a couple of ladies who sung in the praise team, Gwen Armstrong and Tanya Johnson. Sister Sergeant Tawana was our worship leader, and she did a magnificent job. So thank you again, and um, I think I've said all the scribbles on this card. Amen? All right. God bless you. Thank you, Sister. Hello and good morning, Ben Washington brothers and sisters. Today is Unity Sunday. Yay! I'm Minister Tim White along with Lenita Johnson, and we've got your news, information, reminders, and whatever else you need to know about BWBC. Hey, girl. Hey, and good morning <laughs> to my BWBC family. Happy birthday to those who are celebrating in the month of May. And of course, it is chocolate Parfait day. Hey, I don't like I'll chocolate. I'll go with that. I, I like, chocolate. like chocolate. Love chocolate. I don't know about the parfaits. I don't, I don't like, like chocolate. chocolate. All right. On Mondays, Kingdom <laughs> Man Ministry, you are meeting 7 p.m. on Zoom. All the men of the church, you are invited to join them. 7 p.m. on Zoom. And ladies, for this Monday only, 
Our meeting is postponed until next Monday, May 9th. Please join us as we meet and catch up for all the latest news. And on Tuesday evening? Tuesday, we have the Mass Sanctuary Choir Rehearsal with Jace, Minister Collins, Kevon, the whole crew. This is one choir rehearsal with everyone because for the month of May, we're all meeting together. And one important day <laughs> during the week is Wednesday, noonday Bible study in person in our sanctuary. Midweek evening Bible study, that's Wednesday also, it just sounds different, but that's Wednesday evening <laughs> at 7 p.m. on Zoom in the comfort of your home and on your devices. Yes, and don't forget parents, Youth Power Hour is at 7 p.m. with Reverend Sutton and Sister Tia. This month, I think we started last month, we started a new series called I Am. Please don't miss it. And parents, you're welcome to join us too. Okay, let's skip by Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and let's go straight to Sunday. Sunday is my favorite day of the week. This month is unity service. Today, in fact, we have our communion service as well. But for the rest of the month, we will meet at 10 a.m. And Sunday school is at 8.45 a.m. Please, please, please join us. Sunday school is via Zoom. Church service is in person or on Zoom. However you want to do it, get here with us and bring a friend. And now, church announcements continue. Yes, May. Our sister, uh, Sister Speaks Book Club will not meet in May. We will join us in June. If you need any other information, please contact Sister Roslo Gates for all the details. I mentioned we had reminders, so let's remind yes. them of the uh, scholarship ministry. The scholarship ministry. Our BWBC scholarship applications are open and they are due no later than May 15th. If you need any other information, Sister Sherry Sutton has all that you need. Be sure to contact her if you are a high school senior or if you are in college. And this next Wednesday coming up, what about that? I know, May 4th from 6 to 9 p.m., Mother's It's Your Day over at Georgia Farrell. This event is closed, it's full, registration is no longer being taken, but we wanted to remind you, if you did register, please, if you cannot attend, let us know, because it's full and other people are waiting for your slot if you can't make it. So, it's a free event, join us over there. May 8th? May 8th, youth uh, and parents of youth. If you can help us out with the Mother's Day presentation, let Sister Tia or Reverend Sutton know today after service. There used to be a time when we would say, a mind is a terrible thing to waste. <laughs> Haven't heard it in a long time. I know. But I want to remind you on May 22nd, the Education yes. Recognition Day is going to take place. We'll recognize our high school and college graduates. Please contact Sister Tia or if you need more information or if you need help with your scholarship application, presentation, or other items. Yes, very important day. And new members, welcome. We would like to be the first, last, and always just welcome you to be uh, to our BWBC family. Your next orientation is next Sunday, right uh, before our service. So at 9 o'clock, see Sister Rosalind Walker or our church administrator, Sister Dunning, for all the information and to get you acclimated into our BWBC. WBC family. Hot, hot, hot. Hot, hot, hot off the press. I'm so excited. <laughs> we are having BBS this year. I just want to give you this date. Go into your calendar, open your phones, your old Blackberries, whatever you got. But put this date in there. July 27th, 28th, and 29th. We are having BBS. I know, everybody's smiling. And so you're gonna have some information just about every week on BBS. Right now, if you would like to teach, see Sister Tanya Johnson. BBS is coming, guys. I'm so excited. We haven't had it in two years. Anyway. Uh, that's vacation Bible schooling for those of you who <laughs> those may be new to what BBS <laughs> might be. Right. Vacation Bible school, <laughs> yes. And then the special date uh, the wedding ceremony of Jesse Brooks and our very own sister Vicki Garrett is July 2nd, 2 p.m. You all are invited. Just please note that the reception is by invitation only, but the ceremony is going to be right here at BWBC. Ministry leaders! Please send your announcement via our website or email. This is my favorite part. Email on our website to church administrator. Uh, each week we need it by... Yeah, noon, 12 <laughs> noon on Tuesdays. And if you want to connect with BWBC, you can go to our website at bwbcirving.com. We are on Facebook live yes. at BWBC, and you can find us on YouTube at bwbcirving.com. Yes. And don't forget to subscribe.
And those have been our announcements for this week. Pastor Sneed, Minister White, my BWBC family, don't forget to govern yourselves accordingly. accordingly. Thank you. Amen. I want to thank Sister Lanita and Minister White for doing a great job with our announcements. Uh, if you recall, the pandemic hit in March, and shortly before the pandemic hit, we had uh, established uh, a deacon family ministry plan. And so that every member of the church would know who that deacon was. Every deacon should know who their members are. That's assigned to them by Alpha. And then give them a chance to interact if there's ever need. Because sometimes the pastor may not be available. Minister said may not be available. But uh, Sister Ann Michael sent me a lovely email one day. And I just had to ask her uh, to just share uh, with the church, what she shared with me about the impact of her deacon and deaconess had on, on them during the pandemic. So, Ann Michael, you come on up. Good morning, church family. Uh, it is such a pleasure to be here this morning, feeling a whole lot better than I did yesterday. So, God is good. Um, well, my deacon family um, assigned to me is, is, is Deacon Ron Williams and Sister Deaconess uh, Marguerite Williams. And uh, I say that they have saved my life. And I mean that literally because of everything that has had happened to me and my family. Um, during the pandemic. I joined Ben Washington right before the pandemic. And so I thank God that um, Pastor Sneed listened to the voice of God when he asked him to put that deacon ministry together because it was right on time. And when we were closed off to being able to see one another, um, he gave us uh, some support that I didn't even know was gonna be as, as, as great as it was. So first of all, I thank Pastor Sneed for listening to God. And then um, that he listened, to, that, that the deacons and their, and their wives listened to the voice of God sent through Pastor Sneed. So I, I'm telling you, this is an anointed church. This is an anointed church. And it's a blessing for all of us to be members here. But to get back to my deacon family, um, I'm just going to touch on a couple things because I could be here all day and all night talking about all the things that they have done and how they have strengthened me and my family through all of this. I, I didn't know at the time that I was supposed to bloom where I'm planted, but I was blooming where I was planted and didn't even know it. So, Sister Sneed, you were right on time when you guys came up with that. And I'm still blooming where I'm planted. Still going through, but I'm blooming. And I found out that yesterday. Um, it was awesome, the testimonies. And so, um, some of the things that um, the deacons and deaconess did was, first of all, to call and call and keep calling and keep checking and keeping in touch. And, um, and made me, force me to basically tell me about me and my family and what's going on. And so they became, they said, oh, you're not here alone. I said, oh, we're in Texas. We don't have any families. It's me and my two daughters and their two children. And I feel alone a lot because I don't have friends and I don't have family and I don't know people. She said, well, you got family now. <laughs> and you can count on us like you would family. And I was like, yeah, right, that's what they always say. And so they proved to me that I was, that they were for real. They proved to me that they were family. And you know how family get in your business? They got in my business. And they were like, well, what's going on? How are you feeling today? What's going on? What you do? How's this? How's your family? How's your grandmother? How's this going on? And I'm telling you, one day I just cried out and I just let it all go. And I needed that so badly. They were like, you can't always get in touch with your pastor. 
But I can always get in touch with my deacon and my deaconess. No matter what time or day, the times that I was calling out to God and I thought he wasn't there, they were assuring me that he is there, but so were they. I've gone through so many deaths during the COVID time. I've been in the hospital. My daughter's been in the hospital. My other daughter was sick. Grandson sick. Granddaughter not doing the best. So we were going through it in Texas, and I felt we were so alone because we didn't know anyone. But through the grace of God and that family who said they were never going to leave me, they were going to be there for me, they were there. Um, COVID, she was like, if you need anything, let me know. Well, I don't, I'm not that person. I'm not, I'm not there yet. I feel like, you know, if someone knows your needs, you just feel it. Why do you have to wait for someone in their time of feeling the lowest in their lives for you to do something? So she said, well, I know you enough to know that you like uh, chicken noodle soup, so I'm going to bring some. <laughs> I know, I don't know if that's going to help you with your mental health, but I know it's going to help you somewhere in your body. So I go to the door, and there's water, and there's chicken noodle soup on my door. Not two cans, not three cans, but enough to fill the whole month. So we did have provisions. And then when the food pantry came, every single time, they were delivering that food. And I'm telling you, you, you know who Brother Ron and Sister Marguerite is. They took their time, and you should see how they had to come and deliver it, but they made sure they did it because they were being used by God. And so I could go on and on, but I won't. I'm going to stop here and just say that I told Pastor that, like I said, it was if it wasn't if it wasn't for him putting them because I could have been with anybody and, and they, they could have been, uh, you know, good for me. But God put the perfect pair for us. They would sit, they would they would call and um, and pray with my grandchildren. She would do Sunday school with them. Brother Ron would, would, would call and, and, and talk to my grandson about uh, SpongeBob and, you know, and, and, and make him feel like, he said, yeah, I know SpongeBob. <laughs> Brother Ron started talking to him about SpongeBob. I said, is he SpongeBob in disguise? Because he really made my grandson feel good while he was going through. So I'm telling you, it wasn't any part that they did not show that they were family, true family true family. And then when my grandmother lost three of her kids, during the pandemic time, she sent my grandmother a card. She didn't know her, never met her, never talked to her, but I talked to her about her and she sent my, at the time, 94 grandmother, age grandmother a card. And my grandmother called me and she said, girl, what kind of judge you going to down there? And she said, they look like they loving on you, girl. And I said, yes, grandmother. Grandma, they loving on me. I'm so glad to hear that, girl. I don't got to worry about you that much. And I said, um, well, yeah. She said, I love it. I love it. And I love that you still keeping Jesus in your heart, girl. And I said, yes. So at that, um, this last time, my daughter was very, very sick. And she was at the hospital because her, her um, surgery uh, on the outside, her incision was getting affected. And so I had my grandson, didn't have anybody take her to the hospital. Brother Ron was at work and they were talking like they were, um, you know, doing a 911 call to one another and they were trying to figure out ways that they could make sure that my daughter was going to get the care that she gave, that she could get. So I took her to the hospital, but they wouldn't let us stay because my grandson was with me. Boy, I tell you, they said if they leave, let her go today, I'm going to be there to get there to pick her up. And he was at work and I'm like, you want to go home, you want to get, you, you tired, you don't want to be sitting in no hospital or waiting for someone in the hospital, you want to get some sleep. My daughter said when she finally got out of there, praise God, she's doing better now, so thank you. He came and got her, took her to go get her medicine at the 24-hour drugstore, and she said she had the best time in the world with Brother Ron. I mean, you talk about a man of God. 
oh, that touched my heart more than anything. And at that time, God gave me something to do. He gave me, he said, give your flowers to the people while they're here. Right. And so, although this is nothing compared to what they have done for me, but I just wanted to give them a little certificate from me and my family. It says, our deacon family, the Williamses, lighting the way. Amen. And um, it, it just says a little thing on here, and I'm, I'm going to get, I'm, 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 over, I'm over my time, so I'm going to stop right there. And they can show you this if they want, you know, if you want to know what it says. But I just thank you for giving me the time to talk to you, to tell you how wonderful this church has been and how great I feel and how I can't even say the words. But I just thank you all for just loving on me.
amen to the choir for doing a fantastic job. God has blessed them, equipped them to have a spiritual gift of singing. You know, um, if all of us had our way, when God was passing our gifts, we would want the gift that we want, right? Well, the gift I actually wanted to have, I didn't have, I, I don't have, and I really won't get it to the other side. But I wanted to have the gift of singing. And I don't have that gift. But I do love it when I can hear people who can sing for the Lord. Amen? Amen. Now, um, I want to be brief this morning on purpose. I want you to uh, take the word today and, and, and go through it and, and take good notes. I want to just share with you what God has put on my heart. It's found in Ephesians chapter 4. And you'll have some other scriptures. Ephesians chapter 4, beginning with verse number 26. Ephesians 4, verse 26. I'm just going to read two verses. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. You may be seated. I want to talk about uh, this month, the month of May is Mental Health Awareness Month. You know, in African American churches, that seem to be a taboo on certain topics. We tend to stay away from those topics. And yet there's a need, there's a there's a vacuum when there's not a voice being said to address the very uh, things that are going on in the lives of a congregation. Yeah. And, and so God put on my heart to really address, even though it's first Sunday, to address the uh, mental health. And I don't know if there's anybody in the room who won't admit it, but sometimes our health yeah. needs to be checked on. And we need to not shy away from saying, hey, I have a problem. I need some help. And studying for this, you know, this is one of those, uh, it hits you right between the eyes kind of thing. So uh, I'm going to be actually saying some stuff that actually hits me but helps me. So God bless us. But anyway. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 tells us that uh, there are strongholds that are in the lives of people. And even if you are a Christian, you've been born again, you can actually be overtaken by a stronghold. Can I just be truthful today? There are strongholds. There are things that are holding you down that you know is, is causing you not to be your best self. And so you need to acknowledge that there's a stronghold that, that I'm dealing with and I need some help. Jesus said in, in uh, St. John chapter uh, 10, he says, The thief comes but to steal, to kill, and destroy. That's what Satan does. He comes to steal. He comes to kill. He comes to destroy. Now, you don't have to even be spiritual to recognize this, Brother Curry, that there are, uh, our, our world seems to be angry right now. People talk angry. They act angry. They, they, they give visible signs of anger. They go to school angry. They come home angry. They're in the shopping mall angry. Uh, you see Karens all across YouTube being angry. You see uh, people marching the streets because they're angry. You see people driving on the freeway having road rage and they're angry. And, and, and over little things. People are being affected by anger. 
Now, interesting enough, the Bible does not say that anger is a sin. Is there anybody in the room who has never been angry? Some of y'all, if I preach too long, you'll get angry right then. Don't take much to get what? Angry. But Paul said this, be angry and do not sin. In other words, one is capable of being angry and yet not sin. Anger is uh, common to everyone. We've all been impacted by anger. But let me make a statement. The Bible even states that God has been angry. The scripture says that Jesus was angry. Do you think he threw over the money changer tables in a nice way? Excuse me, please. He expressed anger or indignation. So there is good anger and there is bad anger. But what Paul is talking about here, and which is true with most of us, the anger that we are used to dealing with tends to be the bad anger. So most of this message is dealing with not the good anger, but the bad anger. Yeah. So Paul said here, be angry and do not sin. He even said, don't let the sun go down on your wrath. In other words, don't go to bed angry. Because you never know that the person you are angry with you may not see them again. In other words, if you have anger in your heart, get it settled before you close your eyes that night. Get it settled. Get it right. But y'all know, and I have to be honest, you know, my wife and I have been married 41 years. And on occasion or two, she's been angry. Hey, Clint, I need to give you my keys to start the engine up. <laughs> Just in case. Amen. But most of the time, I have been the one who've expressed anger. She'll tell you that. Well, let me share some scriptures with you. I'll go to Genesis chapter 4 real quick. Genesis chapter 4. I want y'all to highlight this. Put it in your Bible. Put it in your notes. Take a good look at it. Where did anger come from? So if I ask this question, who was the first person to get angry? That's in the Bible. Who would y'all say? Y'all would be wrong. <laughs> It'd be Adam. You want to know why Adam was angry? Because when Satan was tempting Eve, and Eve took a bite of the forbidden fruit, and then she gave to Adam and said, here, eat. When God was walking through the cool of the garden and said, where art thou? And they had hidden themselves, and God called them out on the carpet. You know what Adam said? The woman that you gave me, she did tell me to eat and I ate. He was angry. He passed on his anger to Cain. Now what Cain had was an anger that was out of control. So let's look at what Cain did in Genesis chapter 4. Beginning with verse number five. But he, he being God, did not respect Cain and his offering. And Cain was what? Very angry. And his countenance fell. First thing I want to tell you this, angry makes you look ugly. It changes 
your whole appearance. Have you ever seen anybody that look good while they angry? They show you all their teeth. Angry. So angry, Cain was angry. His countenance changed. But listen to what God said. So the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? I asked the question, is there anybody in this room angry? Now I know it's Sunday, but I've seen people in church doing church get angry. I'm not talking about the good anger. I'm talking about the bad anger. They don't even wait till they get in the parking lot. As a matter of fact, if you go sit on that row, you will see their countenance change. Boy, y'all are sure quiet now. He said, don't be angry. But here's what God said. Now remember, the Bible, Paul said, be angry and sin what? Not. So look what happened when God told Cain, why are you angry? And why has your countenance fallen? He says in verse 7, if you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door. In other words, if you don't address anger, if you don't address it in the right way, sin is right at the door, ready to take over. Yeah. That's why you have to be careful about how you address anger. Yeah. Because if you don't do it in the right way, sin is that close. I have two dogs, every time the doorbell rings, they'll run up to the doorbell and they'll, they'll uh, start uh, barking and, and I have to uh, shoot, get away, get away. I have to open the door because they're ready to get right out the door. Well, that's the way anger is. Yeah. They're ready to get outside. They're ready to unveil itself. And, and isn't it true? You can uh, still be in your bed first thing in the morning before your, heat, before your feet hit the floor. You can find a reason to be angry. You can look over and say, he's still here? She's still here? So you got to be careful about anger. Now go with me to Proverbs 22, verse 24. And, I'm, and now these are things that I want to share with you that these are practical things, okay? Proverbs 22, and I'm going to read it out of a different translation. I'm going to read the one out of the New King James, but I'm going to read the one that that I like out of another version, but King James, New King James Version, Proverbs 22, 24 says, Make no friendship with an angry man. Amen. And with a furious man do not go. Now, in the other version it says, Do not make friends with a hot-tempered person. Yeah. Do not associate with one easily angered. Right. So if you're dating somebody, and you planning on marrying them, and, and, and they have displayed a hot temper, uh, anger, ready to flare up like a like a stove when you're ready to cook grits in the morning. You need to be. You need to take a second a second look. Some women have lost their lives because they thought they could change that that hot tempered person after they said I do. I'm not getting a lot of amens, but I know I'm telling the truth. The Bible says don't even associate with them. Listen, 
How many women have lost their lives and lost the lives of one of their kids? I even read this morning where a, a, a person uh, uh, got mad because the girlfriend dumped him. She was gone, but he killed the daughter. Right in Houston, my hometown. So you need to have a, you need to, don't just listen, listen to all the young people get, they're gonna get fat one day most likely. The hair may eventually go, most likely. So don't base your relationship with somebody based on their looks. Base it on character. And don't just think because they go with you to church on Sunday while they're dating that they're going to continue. They already have to be going before you met them. Boy, boy, boy. Just telling the truth to somebody today. Well, let me give you some more scriptures. Go to, go to I'm going to stay in Proverbs for a little bit. Proverbs 14. Just turn over to Proverbs 14 real quick. Proverbs 14, verse 29 reads, and you can highlight this, but it says, Whoever is slow to anger has great understanding, but he who has a hot temper exalts folly. Can I just put it in, in Sneedology? An angry person is a fool. Hot temper. Meal not right. <laughs> Fool. Be careful. Yeah. Who you hit your wagon to. Yeah. Yeah. There are a lot of fools in the world. Yeah. Crazy people. Yeah. And some of them say that they know the Lord. Am I telling the truth? Yes. Ecclesiastes 7 9, you can just write this down. You don't need to turn now. Ecclesiastes 7 9 says, Be not quick in your spirit to become angry. For anger lodges in the heart of fools. Listen to this. Some people are angry because they have unresolved issues. Maybe you were hurt by somebody. Some people are angry with people who have long died. It can't be resolved. But you're allowing that anger to stay in your heart. And it's it, it actually, listen to this, anger affects your health. Can I say it again? Yeah. Anger affects your health. Yeah. And if you're not careful when you having one of your fits of anger, you could have a heart attack. Yeah. Yeah. It has happened before. Yeah. Wow. wow. Um, so can I, let me keep going. Well, let me give you some truths and I'll stop. Proverbs 15.1 says, a soft ang answer turns away wrath. You know, sometimes I wanted to get into a good argument with my wife. And you know what she would do? She would just speak softly. I'm one, I'm one. I'm. I mean, she disarms me with her soft voice. You don't want to you don't want to argue by yourself. 
And then she has a way of doing this, which I just love. She said, I'm not going to let the devil use you. I'm not going to let him use you right now. I'm not going to let him use you. So well, what am I going to do? Be quiet. The Bible says, he who is slow to anger is better than the mighty. And he who rules his spirit than he who takes the city. Thank you. So you know what? If you can control your anger, you're better than a muscle, a person with big muscles. You're better than somebody who can overtake the city. Why? Because you're able to control your emotions. Yeah. And can I say, there's such a thing called displaced anger. Yeah. Now, I've studied this. So let me tell you what displaced anger is. You mad at what took place at work, yeah. and you couldn't say anything back because you wanted to keep your job. But it's been building up all day. So when you get home, the first person that you can talk to, you let them have it. And they hadn't even done anything to deserve it. That's called displaced anger. It happens. All of us. We could be angry at something that's going as in our childhood. And we carry it into relationships. And you and they don't even know why you got that big old large chip on your shoulder. Yeah. And that chain round, that chain and ball round your leg. Yeah. Because you haven't dealt with it. And a lot of black people, a lot of Christian folk, rather walk around with a smile on their face pretending it's not there. So you can suppress your anger, you can uh, repress your anger, but can I, you can express your anger, but can I give you a fourth one? Deal with your anger. Deal with it. Listen. There's nothing wrong with asking for help. Nothing wrong, nothing wrong, nothing wrong. I say, hey, I, I, I got an issue. And I need to resolve it. I need to resolve it. I can still remember some people who, who were displaced because of Hurricane Katrina. And, and they came to the, to the school where I was a principal, and I understood, but, but they, they were angry. Their whole life had been turned upside down. And in many cases, they were unwelcome where they had uh, uh, come. And sometimes, listen to this. That's why I'm glad Ann Michael spoke today, because if there's, if there's any place where you ought to find love, and not the bad anger is at the church. You ought to find it in church. You ought to find, you ought to find somebody who's an, uh, uh, an encourager in church. If you need encouragement, there ought to be people lining up to encourage you. You can do this thing. Keep on keeping on. But the world is so angry right now, we just want to kick people to the curb. Yeah, yeah, oh. Now, let me give you some things, and I'll wrap this up in the time. I'm going to give you all about 10 things to consider, and I'm going to wrap this up. You can write this down. You pay a price for anger. Yeah. That's number one. You pay a price for anger. Mental, physical, spiritual, you pay a price for anger. Number two, anger is very destructive. Very destructive. Now stay in Ephesians chapter 4 for this third one because I want you to see this. Y'all think that uh, 
Anger rides solo, but I want to tell you something. Anger has some companions. He has traveling road dogs. And in Ephesians chapter 4, if you just go down a little bit lower in verse number 31, it says, let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you. So who are the, who are the road dogs that ride with anger? Bitterness. You ever seen people, you know, see, if, if you let that anger just stay there, in time you become bitter. You don't become better, you become bitter. And you're walking around with a sour face and a sour personality. And you're wondering why people don't want to be around you. Who wants to be around a lemon all day? Amen. I'm trying to help somebody. And I had to look up the word clamor because I don't use that word often. I mean, I rarely, brother Ron, I don't even, I don't even know what the word, I had to look it up. I had to look it up in the Greek. But what it means is, Loud speaking. So when people get really, really angry, they get loud. They get so loud their false teeth fall out. That's loud. So, Number four, anger is a trait that can be passed on. Yes. See, if you grow up in a house full of angry people, you will learn to be angry. Yeah. And you will think that's normal. All right. You think if, if mom and dad are fighting all the time, you think that's normal. Cussing each other out. Mm. Oh, <clears throat> yeah. Wow. Number five. Anger is unhealthy. Yes, Believe it or not, it, it affects the internal organs. Now, if you're a believer, you ought to be too blessed to be stressed. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Number six. Anger, listen to this. Here's the reason why you are to get rid of anger or unforgiveness. See, because sometimes you're angry with people that you haven't forgiven. Anger damages one's relationship with God. Amen. See, if you're harboring anger at somebody and you're not willing to show forgiveness to them, do you think God is cool with that? Because you're going to run up to him and say, Lord, forgive me. And he didn't watch how you have been unforgiven. And can I just drop a pen right here and say, forgiveness is never earned. Forgiveness is never earned. There are people who have said, I'm not going to forgive them because they haven't earned it. Forgiveness is never earned. I'm going to say it again because y'all not saying amen. Forgiveness is never earned. If you're trying to make somebody earn forgiveness from you, I'm here to tell you, you got the wrong Christianity. You're reading the wrong Bible. Read the Bible. Forgiveness is never earned. It's simply given. Yeah. That's it. That's it. That's it. It's not earned, it's just given. Yeah. And I want to remind some people, you are better off 
letting go than holding on to that thing that's making you miserable and bitter and angry, resentful. They may never earn it. They may never even ask for forgiveness. But it's better for you to let it go. Because it's messing with you. Yes, he dumped you. Yes, he done wrong. Yes, she done wrong. Yes, your kids didn't act right. But don't drown in anger. So I share this real quick. Does anybody know one of the leading causes of death of an eagle? You think it's somebody shooting them out the sky? I was shocked. Patricia Washington, one of the leading causes of death of an eagle is by drowning. Yes, Brother Ray, I see that look in your face. You were shocked. Yes, it's by drowning. You may, you're asking, why is it an eagle, one of the causes, a leading cause of death is drowning? Because eagles, when they have, they have eagle's eye. They can actually see, see their prey from a long distance. And, and, and an eagle will, will look above a lake or a river. They'll see a fish from a distance. They'll swoop down in the water to grab the fish, but sometimes they'll grab a fish just a tail that's heavier, bigger than what they thought. And so the fish trying to save their life, the eagle's trying to take the fish's life, the eagle will go down, the fish will go down in the water yeah. the, in their natural environment, but the eagle who's not that's natural environment, they'll hold on with their claws trying to pull the fish out of the water. But, and, and, and the fish will go down deeper and deeper, and, and, and the struggle is long, and rather than let the fish go so they can get out of the water and live, they'll hold on till they drown. And there are people who are walking around in life holding on to stuff that they need to let go. Let it go. Let it go, let it go. For your sake, let it go. Your relationship with God should be number one, number uno. Don't let, don't let somebody else damage your relationship with God. I heard this, so this is not, this is not Sneed speaking. But one of the reasons why we need to let things go is number one, God is a just judge and we're not to judge. What do I mean by that, Sister Gwen? Somebody, and this is, this is probably where the church really is, it gets, gets involved with this brother McQuarrie. Sometimes somebody's done something, not to us, but we act like it's to us, and we become the judge and the jury. And we act like they sinned against us. No, they sinned against God. And rather than you being the executioner, let God handle it. Didn't he say, vengeance is mine? I will what? Repay. I'll never forget one time, Sister Lily Nicholson, there was a woman who I was applying for a job, but she just bad mouthed me, bad mouthed me, bad mouthed me, so I didn't, I didn't get the job. I was disappointed. I grew a beard. I started brushing my teeth for weeks. I'm just telling the truth. That's another sermon next week. <laughs> but listen, I forgave that lady. I prayed for that lady. I said, I'm going to let it go. You know what happened? True story. The lady who used her mouth to lie on me got cancer in the tongue. 
and got half her tongue cut off. I didn't, I, I didn't even get happy at that. All I, all I said was, I'm going to pray for her. Isn't it amazing? It's amazing. Yeah. We want to be the judge, but here's the third, here's the last thing I want to say. Okay. All of us have sinned. Yeah. All of us have done wrong. Yeah. There's not a person in this room who hasn't done some wrong in their life. And we need it. We wanted it. We desired it. We needed forgiveness. And the best example of someone who was mistreated and yet demonstrated love in the midst of everything is Jesus. As he was hanging on the cross, rejected and despised by men, acquainted with grief, while hanging on the cross, and his mother was there, uh, and John the, John the uh, apostle was there, Jesus had enough love and compassion for those who had mistreated him to say, Father, forgive them. For know not what they're doing. So you want to you be Christ-like in a cruel, angry world? Forgive. You want to be Christ-like in an in a, in a, in a unhealthy environment, love. You want to be Christ-like uh, uh, and uh, uh, show that you're growing in your faith? Learn how to control that thing, that bad anger. Yeah. Now, have I said anything yes. today yeah. that you can't do, All right. learn from. That's good. That's good. It takes a whole lot of Christ, yeah. a whole lot of love to be able to manage and maneuver through an angry world. Yeah. Yeah. But that's our, that's our call. That's our challenge. Yeah, yeah. I want you to bow with me with a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you that we have an example through your son Jesus who was angry at times, but he never sinned. And he was willing to forgive those, Father, who didn't even ask for forgiveness. They yelled out, crucify him. And yet he never said a mumbling word. And even as he was hanging on the cross, Father, and they, and they said, if you, be the, if you be the Christ, come on down. And others yelled, save us and yourself. He showed us, Father, how to live under control. So Lord, we're praying now that if there is anybody in the room who's holding on to stuff from the past that's damaging their relationship, their walk with you, I pray, Father, right now in the name of Jesus, that they will let go. If you're holding on to something right now and you want to let it go, just raise your hand so I know that you've been touched. I see you. I see you. God bless you. God bless you. You can put your hands down. I want you to know God loves you. He wants to mold you and shape you into his image. 
I need to decrease that he might increase. Now, if there be any here, Father, who's not saved and they want to accept Christ as their personal Savior, I pray, O oh Lord, that you will move on their hearts right now to accept Christ. And if there be any father here who's looking for a church home but don't have a church home, but they desire a church home, Father, where they can be taught the word of God and can grow in that faith. They want to be surrounded by a loving church, caring deacons, an understanding preacher, pastor, loving youth workers, loving adult workers. If, if they feel that this is the place where you have called them to blossom where they are planted, I pray, Lord, that you'll move on their hearts to make that decision. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, we got two things to do and we'll be dismissed. And we're going to take the Lord's Supper. And he said, we just took the Lord's Supper on, on Resurrection Sunday. That's true. But the Bible says, as often as you do this, you do show forth my death until I come again. So we're going to take it again. Now, now, now remember, you can't take this in what? Anger. That's why the Bible says, let a man examine himself. Let him examine, self-examination is great. Am I right? Some people have discovered through self-examination that they have a lump. And they've been able to be saved. Some have discovered through self-examination that, that, that there's something not right with themselves. So, I, so what we do now is we examine ourselves. If, if there's anything in your heart that you're harboring, don't take the Lord's Supper. The Bible says that some have taken it unworthingly. And because of that, some have been sick and some have fallen asleep. So if you are a Christian and, and, and you didn't get one of these on your way in, raise your hand so we'll make sure you get one. Okay, we got, we got about two more, the, the, the Harrises. Sister, Sister Mildred, right back there. Mm -hmm. Anybody in the choir? Okay, we got Brother Ron, all right. reading found in 1st Corinthians chapter 11 verse 23 for I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said take eat this is my body which is broken for you do this in remembrance of me may we all eat together In the same man, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he come. May we drink together. Amen, amen, amen. Now, 
some of the visitors came in after the visitors card and I want to thank I want to thank our visitors sister Jackie thank you for inviting your your friends to come uh, thank you every visitor who's here today I'm also excited to, to, to announce that sister K miles has agreed to be the uh, the, the head of the deaconess ministry and so she'll be contacting you all for the month of June amen so y'all have now don't forget the whole month of June is I mean May is what 10 o'clock services so next Sunday don't come at 11 come at 10 amen so all of the month of of May we're going to be celebrating Unity Month. Even the President Biden said last night at the at the White House uh, dinner that uh, the pandemic is is just about over. It's not totally over. Some of y'all are asking how long are we going to be wearing masks in church? Well, we're going to at least wear them all the way through the month of May. Okay, and I, I have an orange one. My wife has gotten so really, really decorative, she bought me an orange mask. Amen. So, at least through the month of May, amen, and after that we'll look and, and uh, we'll probably do what others have done. We'll remove it and make it optional, okay? But, for, but since we're doing unity and everybody's in here, I think it's wise at least through the month of May, amen. Now, if you'll stand as we get ready to leave, The last act of service that we do during our, our morning worship service is we prepare to give. Amen. We give our tithes, we give our offerings, and, and uh, you can also give online as some have done. And if you want to designate some of your uh, extra funds to help the different ministries, the food pantry ministry, you can help. Now we got another ministry that's online. Brother McGuire has told me it's called the Living Bread Ministry. What is the Living Bread Ministry? You may be asking. And Sister Snee, we need to give $100 because I said I would. The Living Bread Ministry allows us to be able to, for a lot of our people who come to noon Bible study, they come, they come at noon on, on Wednesdays. And sometimes we have people who come on that lunch break. Brother McQuarters comes on his lunch break. Brother Rufus came on his lunch break. He brought a friend. And so what we do is we try to give people at least a good little snack, sandwich, meal. And I want to thank Brother Bradford for being the one. And, and he cooks good food. Yes, he does. Hey, Amen. That's why I'm, I'm going to have to pay my way to Hawaii this year. Because I haven't, I haven't kept my end of the bargain. But Brother Bradford, thank you. That's $6,000 you owe me. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Now, we want to pray for the offering as you leave, and then we're going to give the benediction. Father God, we thank you now for the opportunity to give our tithes and our offerings and our special offerings, Father God, to help carry on the ministry that we have at this place. Bless the gifts as well as the givers. May all that we bring in, Father, be used for the ongoing of your kingdom work. You said in your word you love a cheerful giver. So, Father, let us give cheerfully, not grudgingly, nor even out of necessity. And we pray this now in Jesus' name. Repeat after me. This is, this is going to be real easy. Be angry, be angry. and sin not. You are excused. Thank you for listening to the Ben Washington Baptist Church online Sunday service. We pray that you have been blessed.